Recently, companies like Google have started projects like Project Glass in an attempt to build digital eyewear and as well augmented reality applications. Steve Mann has been developing digital eyeglasses for their use in mediated reality and augmented reality applications for 30 years. The iTap digital eyeglasses embedded by Steve Mann allow for the user to computationally modify what they see. This gives rise to mediated reality and augmented reality applications. This is something that Project Glass lacks as a feature. Irrelevant advertising that often distracts users from doing their task is often a problem. Our solution is to present a mediated reality software based on the Video Orbits algorithm that takes planar patches and replaces them with user-generated content. This means that users are no longer beholden to what the advertiser says it should be. As you can see, you can see in a real-time video that we can put browser windows into planar patches in the scene. As well, in this scene here, we have an advertisement that happens to have a dangerous stop sign on it. And we've improved it by having a personal message on it. But this could also be used for Google AdWords to be placed or maybe directions from Google Maps to give to the users. The possibilities are endless. ITAB changes the nature of advertising. No longer do advertisers have to pay for all the billboard advertising. Instead, they can advertise through the ITAP onto the planar patches that the users see everywhere. Professor Mann will now explain how the ITAP works through an old prototype. So this is an ITAP prototype that we made in 1998. And it has uh, a camera here, but it looks like, when you look in here, it looks like there's a glass eye uh, down here, uh, or a lens, but actually there isn't an, any lens there. It's just simply the, 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 the image of this camera in, in this diverter. So rays of eyeward bound light that would have entered the eye are instead diverted through this camera here and then are processed by a processor and then reinstated over here on this rendering engine um, which then redraws those rays of light and brings them back to the retina. So if you look at it from the side of course you've got rays of light, eyeward bound rays of light come in, they get diverted through the camera, they go through the processor and come around this other side and then they get re-rendered or redrawn into the eye. And so you can see it kind of looks like um, there's a, a glass eye here, but of course it's just a camera. And the camera is exactly where the eye, in the eye socket in a sense, where the image is in terms of its effective position. And again, the re-rendering is also. So in effect, the ITEP is kind of like having a camera and, and, a, and a display system in, inside your eye. And now we are going to put on a pair of ITAP eyeglasses so that you can see through what it looks like to look through a pair of ITAP. As you can see, you can see through to the scene because the diverter we're using happens to be semi-transparent. And as you turn on the rendering engine or display, you can begin to see its reflection in the diverter. What we're doing now is we're actually taking the virtual content of the display, which is actually a feed from the video camera of the ITAP and we're trying to align this virtual content feed with the real scene, in this case with the oscilloscope. So as we get it more closely aligned, we're able to do things like augmented reality and mediated reality applications. Often it's useful to have virtual content attached to the real scene in augmented reality applications. Here we have a virtual tag that's been affixed to the oscilloscope. As you can see, even moving the camera around does not change the position of the tag, and the tag stays this in the same position in space. Even adding obstructions such as the hand, uh, moving hand, does not actually change the location of the tag.
So here we have James, and uh, the eye tap eyeglasses are displaying his tag based on recognizing his face. And as you can see, uh, we can track James. And what's nice about the eye tap is that uh, the real light is still gone through, so it's very natural interaction with the world. You're not being blocked from it. You're just getting this extra synthetic light information. So you're still receiving the real light mixed in with some synthetic light, which is something you'd want in the real world. We have a bit of a time-lapse interaction using the Engware uh, augmented reality system. And as you can see, the user is getting instructions from a remote ex expert who tells them to turn the knob. And they put this text right next to the knob so that the user knows that they should turn it, like that instruction. The user turns the knob and receives feedback saying that they did a good job. So an application like this is useful not only for technicians, but even if you're in a grocery store and you're deciding between which glass of milk to buy, you can get shared visual collaboration happening with ITAP and a network connection. Present day prototypes. So this is a, a, another version of the glasses that I'm look at, that I'm working on, and the eyeglasses use the frame itself as the element that conveys the information. If I draw that larger, you've got the diverters here, your eye is here, rays of eyeward bound light are instead directed through into this element, goes into the computer system, and then the rendering engine comes out over the other side and resynthesizes or redraws those in laser light going into the eye to replace the reality. This particular version of the eyeglasses has a nice normal appearance and when properly manufactured, this is a rough prototype obviously, but when properly manufactured it just looks like the eyeglass frames and you see right through the frames in a sense the you see the world through the frames of the eyeglasses.